Hey, what's up? It's Václav here. And this is my series about how I automated my house using Home Assistant. Last time we spoke about uh, covers, about the shades, and today we're going to be talking about uh, heating, about the temperature. Now, when I started thinking about automating heating, obviously, I looked at the products that are available that I can just plug in and use. Things like uh, Google Nest or Ecobee. But I have very soon realized that they are of no use to me because the way they work is they replace the room thermostats. But I don't have such a thing. I don't know if it's European thing, if there's difference between US and Europe or if it's something specific to uh, the residential houses. But the way how my heating works is uh, I use something called Equithermal Regulation. And the way it works is there is a boiler in the house and the boiler has a uh, temperature sensor outside on the north side so it's not uh, influenced by the sun. And the boiler is trying to reach equilibrium between the thermal losses of the house and the heating to maintain a comfortable temperature. Uh, let me show you how it works. So there's the boiler and uh, the boiler has a gas burner in it. So uh, the gas flame is heating the water that is running through it and the hot water comes out. It heats the house and by doing that it gets colder and then it comes back uh, to the boiler and it's heated again and it keeps circulating like that. In each room there are the radiators. They basically get warm from the hot water coming into them. They heat the air and by doing that the water coming out of them gets colder and it's get back to the main circulation. Now here comes the trick. There is a mixing valve that is mixing the hot water going from the boilers with the colder water that is uh, coming uh, back from the radiators. Now, for this to work, uh, there is a pump that is circulating the water through the circuit. And uh, what it does is, it actually measures the temperature that is uh, going in the radiators. And it's actually measuring also temperature going out from the radiators. And it's setting the temperature according to the outside temperature. So. Uh, in the house, there is uh, another uh, sensor for temperature outside the house. And the trick is, if it's colder outside, it will set higher temperature uh, for the heating to compensate for the losses. It has to heat more. And if it's warmer outside, it will uh, make the heating temperature lower. So to control the temperature in the house, the boiler uh, uses a chart with heating curves where on the vertical axis there is the uh, temperature of the water, heating water and on the horizontal axis uh, there is the temperature outside and for each uh, desired temperature in the house it uh, defines a curve so uh, let's say this is a curve if you want to have 15 degrees inside and uh, the boiler will know that if the temperature outside is minus 10, it has to heat the water to 55 degrees. And if you want to have temperature inside uh, 20 degrees uh, and outside is still minus 10, it has to heat the uh, water to 70 degrees. So the boiler has a program where I can program uh, the different temperature for the day and night. And what it does is, it will basically switch to different heating curve for day and for night. This is how it works if the water runs through the radiators. But we don't want to have all the radiators heating all the time. Uh, maybe there is sun outside and it's uh, warming up the room inside. Maybe you have a fireplace on. And you don't want to have the uh, same temperature in all the rooms. So uh, what we also do is we have a thermostatic valve on each radiator. And we can set the valve to uh, regulate the temperature uh, in the room to a desired temperature. 
and uh, when it's already warm in the room uh, the valve will close and the water will not run through the radiator and as a result uh, if the water is not running through the radiator the radiator is not getting warm and uh, therefore the water is not uh, getting cooled down and uh, what the boiler does is it actually keeps and regulates the water in the primary circuit to a set temperature and if the water is not uh, cooled down and the water is still warm the boiler can uh, stop the heating it can stop the gas so this is how the heating was uh, designed to work Okay, that's cool. It's uh, automated. There is a program and it automatically controls the temperature based on the time schedule, right? Well, not quite. There was two things I don't like about that. The first thing is uh, the program is static. It doesn't take into account whether someone is in home or not. So if I leave later or arrive earlier or indeed if I work from home, it's cold in here. I would have to go upstairs and manually tweak the heating and it would take about an hour or two uh, to adjust the heating. Or maybe I'm supposed to be at home, it's programmed to start heating, but I am not here. I go somewhere, visit my friends or go somewhere for a weekend and it's heating for no reason. And the second issue is it's heating the same in all the rooms. There is no reason for it to heat in this room if I'm not here the whole day or to heat in the bedroom during the day if I'm in the living room indeed. So I wanted to automate it to make it a little bit more smarter. The first thing I did is I wanted to uh, automatically adjust the thermostatic valves on the radiators. So what I did is I replaced them by uh, valves that are controlled by the Z-Wave so I can change the temperature setting uh, on those valves. Uh, let me show you how it's done. So this is the thermostatic valve I went for. I uh, bought them on Amazon. It's a Downforce LC13 or sometimes referred to as Downforce uh, Z-Wave. They cost about 40 euro. Sometimes you can get them cheaper uh, if you buy them in a bulk. But you gotta be careful. Uh, there is another version which looks exactly the same. Uh, but it doesn't have the Z-Wave. It's uh, called Link Connect and you can control them uh, from your uh, mobile phone or through radio, but there is no way to connect them uh, to home assistant. So make sure you get the Z-Wave version. And uh, this is the old thermostatic valve. So uh, first thing we need to do is to uninstall it. It's very simple, just unscrew the nut and uh, remove it. So this is it, this is how it looks like. And then uh, we can look at how to install the new one. Obviously you need to add the batteries and then attach it to the radiator, which is uh, very similar to the old one, but there is one thing you have to be careful about and that is the valve has to be in the installation mode, otherwise you wouldn't be able to tie the screw. So there are instructions how to do it, but in my case what I did is I did a factory reset just to make sure it's uh, all ready. Uh, then you can just uh, screw it on and uh, tie it uh, slightly and then you can rotate it into a position that the uh, middle button is uh, pointing down. Once this is done uh, we can include it in the Z-Wave network. So to do that uh, I look in the instruction again and it says I just uh, push the uh, middle round button and uh, it should do the trick. Oh, before I do that, I have to go to my configuration, to my uh, Z-Wave network management. I have to say I'd like to add a node, so I push that. And then I can go back to my valve and uh, push the uh, middle button. It'll short the blink and it should be included. Let's go to the home assistant to check if it's done. So if I check in the notes, there should be a new one. And indeed there is Downforce Z thermostat with some generic name. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna heal the network. And then I can also double check and follow the manual and check whether the unit is connected. And indeed it is. So now I have it in the home assistant, but before I start using it, uh, I'd like to rename it to something that makes sense to me. So I'm gonna go 
to the integrations Z-Wave. I'm gonna go to that device uh, and then there is a configuration uh, icon on the right. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna give it uh, some name. I'll also say uh, the location, the area where it's located. And it's very smart now. In the new version, it's gonna ask me whether it uh, should rename all the uh, sensors as well. So uh, I will just check that they are renamed. And indeed, uh, th this one is the battery as well. And then the actual uh, climate, uh, it's renamed as well, but I like to simplify it because this is the one I'm gonna be using. So I will just uh, use the name and I will remove the thermostat. So now this is added. Uh, I already have it in the Lovelace, so I can go and check it out. And you can see there is uh, five thermostat already added. Uh, this thermostatic valve is very cheap and maybe this is why it doesn't have a, a temperature sensor. So this is maybe the only thing I don't like about it, but I found a way around that. Uh, I actually use Abdemon uh, script that is getting uh, temperature from another sensor I have in the room and it's uh, adding it to the thermostat together with the information uh, whether the heating is heating or not. So I have all information in one place. So I'm gonna just restart the Abdemon and uh, it will update the thermostats. Now the thermostats are updated. They show the temperature in the room, they show the heating mode, and they also show the target temperature, which I can change. And by doing that, I can uh, change and control the temperature in the room. Okay, so now I can set the target temperature in each room separately. This is great. But we are not done yet because what I'm not controlling is the, is the boiler itself. The problem with the uh, setting up the valves is uh, if there is a program in the central heating in the boiler that says that uh, it has to set the temperature to the low temperature. When I come home earlier, uh, even if I open the valves on the radiators, it won't be warm in here because the water that comes to the radiator is not warm enough. So what I would have to do is I would have to keep the heating, the water in the radiators uh, warm on the high temperature whole day. And I don't like doing that. At the same time, if I am out, if I am out for a weekend, for example, there is no reason to keep the temperature circulating, the hot uh, water circulating through the house. So I wanted to be able to automatically uh, switch between the high and low setting on the boiler. So I was looking for ways how to do that. So first thing I did is I was searching whether the boiler has some kind of API or maybe an interface which I can uh, use some relay and control between those two settings. I was looking in the web, I was uh, calling the uh, boiler manufacturer and indeed I have found some solution that they have uh, available but when I called them they told me it's very expensive and it's not really meant for residential houses it's rather meant for a big uh, houses with multi-story multi-tenant houses because it's a very expensive thing but the guy uh, actually was very nice and he recommended that uh, there is a way around that the boiler has uh, one contact which is normally short connected so this is connected this contact is closed and it's used if i did not have equithermal regulation it's used to connect the room thermostats and i could do that if i connect a relay with arduino to this connector if i disconnect it it will stop heating and if i close the relay back it will start heating according to the program again. So if I have this relay connected there, I can switch it between uh, the programmed uh, heating program and, and stop heating. And this is exactly what I wanna do. So this is what I did. Uh, I have uh, obviously not uh, opened the boiler and start messing around uh, inside. This is gas boiler and I didn't want to risk an explosion. So obviously I have called the authorized service uh, company and I told them what I wanted to do. 
and I prepared the relay, which is galvanically isolated. So I basically said there is a wire with two cables. Can you please open the boiler, uh, disconnect the short circuit and connect it with those two wires? And they came, they did that. It wasn't expensive at all. And uh, as a result, I have now a boiler that has this external relay that I can keep closed. So I have it normally closed. When everything is disconnected, it's closed like normal. But if I open it, it will stop heating. So now I can uh, control the temperature in each room separately. And uh, I can also control the uh, temperature of the heating water that comes to the radiators. I also have a bunch of uh, temperature sensors in the rooms that uh, measure the temperature. And I can take all of that as well as the uh, covers and the shade and information about the weather. So I, I take all this information and I used it to optimally, hopefully optimally, uh, regulate or control the temperature in the house. And this is what the next video is going to be about. Until then, bye bye.